In this video, we want to discuss the relationship between functions and their graphs. We'll remind ourselves that for a function, x is a letter that is often used to simply represent the input of that function, whereas the output of that function can be represented in two different ways. Well, we call this f of x, which means the value of the function evaluated at x, or uh, we often use the letter Y to represent outputs. And do keep in mind that these letters can be different. We have F in this case, but a function can be a function of height, which it might be called H, uh, or various other letters as well. Uh, they can be written in coordinate pair form, and this indicates for us how to graph them. These are our X and Y coordinates, which can go on to the coordinate plane that we are familiar with, X being the horizontal direction and Y being the vertical direction. So when we're given a function, one option to graph a function is always to create a table. Now we have practiced and learned some shortcut ways to graph functions, uh, but this is always a default way to approach it. If I want to figure out where to put the coordinate when X is negative two, I simply evaluate f of negative two by plugging negative two in for x. One half negative two minus two squared minus six. That's negative four squared, which is 16. Half of 16 minus six is eight minus six or two. So when x is negative two, the function will equal two. And we can place that coordinate onto our graph. I'm kind of working through a few more of these. When we plug in zero, we're gonna get two minus six, negative four. Uh, when we plug in two, we're gonna get uh, two minus two is zero, zero squared minus six is negative six. And then I think because this is a parabola, we're gonna notice this uh, repeat the pattern back up. When we plug in four, we get two squared, which is four. Half of that is two minus six is negative four. And we can, we'll go ahead and assume that we get two or zero, negative four, just to go ahead and complete our picture here, two, negative six, four, negative four, and six, two. Now it's important that we not only are able to produce a graph like this, but two, we remember what type of function this is so that our graph seems to make sense. And in fact, two and negative six, we might have recognized as being the vertex of this parabola before we even started. But I also just want to make sure we recognize uh, some of these points are represented. This is the point four comma negative four. Now, but it's also uh, perfectly acceptable for us to represent this as four comma f of negative four. Because what we're saying here is that the x coordinate is four, and the y coordinate is what the function equal and four of the input. And so f of four is a way to represent that particular y coordinate. That probably has a little less information than going ahead and solving the function equal to four. But it's very important that we're comfortable with this various way of knowing what a coordinate looks like uh, in spherical form as opposed to its visual form on the coordinate plane. Two different types of functions for you to kind of practice relationship between graphs and functionalization. Here's the graph presented to you. You're going to read this graph in order to answer six questions here. And the function was given, so you will not be able to find the answers by summing out directly. You will have to instead be able to read the graph. Keep in mind uh, what we learned ourselves with about the difference between the number being the input and number being the output of the function and how to start with the graph as an x coordinate coordinates. Uh, you will also be able to find these six ones you have. Start the video back up and come down here. And here you are getting, uh, being given a description of a function. And you're going to want to sketch a graph that would meet all of these criteria. When you are done with these problems, uh, check the answers below. I will note that your answer for the six questions above should be exactly the same, but your answer for the graph problem here might be slightly different than the one that you see on the answer key, but you're going to want to make sure you notice all of the key parts of the graph and see that the key parts that are described here are in fact the same as the one on the answer key.